This is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham, and I have got Constable Aaron Tompkins back with me, our Community Service Officer from Smith Falls. Thanks for joining us again. Again, always a pleasure to be here, and uh, good morning. Uh, it's our monthly update. We're going to sort of update what's what's happened during the last time we saw you, and uh, moving forward because we've got a few things going on too. So, definitely, it's been uh, it's been busy. It has the been. whole summer has been uh, that reopening. Everything got back to somewhat being normal, but uh, I know we've been busy and. The last month hasn't uh, been an exception. It's been uh, very busy as well. So. And maybe we'll start with uh, back on Beckwith. Yeah, so that was a, that was a blast. Um, finally able to use some of the, uh, the facilities in there. The businesses reopened. Um, big stage, lots of entertainment. The town went all out for that. So uh, just want to say job well done and bear with, uh, with the construction. It is almost done. Like we are so close. We're almost there. So close, and they did so much. They were working so hard just to get it to the point that we could use it that that, that day too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And weather-wise, lucked out. So oh. uh, again, um, the uh, the weather gods, if you would, have been looking uh, unfavorably on us because every community event that we've done this summer has been beautiful weather. So and there was a few members from our Smith Falls Police there that day. Yeah, we had uh, Constable Keoghan out in the bicycle. He was wearing shorts, so that just tells you how warm it was for uh, October first. So you know what amazing and uh, love interacting with the public and uh, showing your visibility hey we're, we're also part of the community and we're excited too excellent. we've been looking at the construction for the last uh, year and a half two years and uh, excited to see it being complete absolutely absolutely so uh, talk about <clears throat> visibility you were at the turkey train i saw you <laughs> i was there I've... very quickly mm -hmm. uh, again it was just one of those days where uh, my schedule um, threw me in about 18 different directions, but I uh, made my guest appearance very quickly, but I had some amazing uh, staff members come out. So uh, two of our dispatchers and uh, one is actually, so Tammy Hardy and uh, Chloe Wilson. So our dispatchers were able to take part and then uh, I was able to secure a few officers to unload at the, uh, the food bank. So amazing job, St. Francis Church, a couple of the other schools chipped in as well. I, I think we were at 2,600 pounds and a couple hundred dollars or something yep. total raised. Um, but I know St. Francis alone had close to 24 or 2,300 pounds themselves. Um, and that school bus was filled. Every seat was filled and the boxes were multi levels. So, job well done as always. And uh, we're always happy to take part in that. Uh, Absolutely. The we, turkey filled, trot. we filled the bus and oh. uh, we even needed a van. Robbie Hull was there. Our I know. I he was there Robbie, and uh, so. it was his, uh, his van. So yeah. it meant so much to the kids to be able to see you though too because they, they expect yeah. to see you every I know. Year, so. They like seeing the, the police officers yep. getting dressed up. So that's why I wanted to make sure I spent at least a few minutes there saying hi and I apologized and said I have to go do police things. So uh, here's my friends, yeah. Chloe and Timmy and <clears throat> they got dressed up. They did an amazing job. Lots of wonderful pictures. So, uh, and a different experience um, for uh, for Chloe in this case. She's an aspiring police officer. So, this gives her a sense of uh, that community um, involvement. So, absolutely. And maybe I can ask you at this time too, because I, I see that you're you're looking to hire constables. Mm. And, and if you're thinking uh, in the future, you know, you're in high school now and you want to be a police officer, what sort of things should you be planning? Yeah, so <clears throat> this is part of my role. I go into the schools, talk to uh, students, and we partner up with um, the a few different classes uh, in the high schools, um, social justice, and anybody that's kind of interested in maybe the corrections, military. Uh, I try to get them involved with as many things, community events being one, um, the lockdown drills. I always try and uh, bring a few students out just so they can see their um, a police officer's view of what the lockdown drill looks like versus inside the classroom. Um, we also talk about career path courses. So we always recommend uh, the laws. Um, community service, community involvement is always huge as um, that's one of the first things that policing services look for. How are you active in your community? Because um, that's, a, that's a big part of our role. We want to be seen, we want to be active and uh, participate in our community. So, Absolutely, you know, and, and when you say that, being active in your community too, it's not just a Monday to Friday job. No, no. We, uh, we're active. Um, a lot of the times people don't see us. We're out walking downtown, uh, the bicycles. So uh, again, daytime, we'll hit the high visibility spots. We'll hit the, the downtown core, all the parks, the beaches. Mm -hmm. But nighttime, we're in an out of alleyways, the back streets. We're looking for people maybe going into cars or... Uh, up to no good. So 
again, uh, you may not see us. We're always out there. We're always visible uh, in some form or fashion. And if anybody's interested in a career, you know, they could come and talk to you. I know you're very yeah. approachable, that sort of thing. You just want to make take sure you're taking the right courses and the right courses that it looks good when you get exactly. to, yeah, get to college. We always recommend the college um, or university or mm -hmm. equivalent, or there's a hybrid where you can take both in the same amount of time as one uh, university degree where you get both college and university. So that's a, a nice hybrid model that uh, I know Algonquin College and Carleton University have in play, and there's a couple other ones across the province that uh, also do that. All right. Well, speaking of Algonquin College, you got a, you got an award, an award of distinction. Yeah, so said that's where you went. I went there a long time ago. I think I graduated in uh, 94, so a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I was um, nominated by uh, a gentleman faculty member over at the Perth campus, and it all came as part of a conversation because we had that amazing partnership when uh, the Police uh, Foundations program was up in Perth and said, let's highlight small town police service and a small campus being uh, the Perth campus and show what amazing work we do with each other separately and in our community. So uh, that's where this all came from and uh, I was able to uh, successfully get that award. So funny evening, they, they, they went all out and uh, it was a gala style, so it was Very all formal. formal mm -hmm. um, award presentations on stage, uh, had to give up like a speech and I said, oh, I didn't know about that, but uh, <laughs> always fun and uh, my speeches uh, are always kind of off the cuff and just uh, fun. So we got a good joke out of, uh, out of that one. Excellent. Well, congratulations on that. It was well deserved. Thank you. Well deserved. Now our town, uh, as well as at, at Worldly, it, it, we, uh, we celebrated National Day for Truth and Reconciliation on September 30th. Very yeah. proud of our town. We did, a really, did it up nice. Yeah. So I want to say there was about 50 to 60 people that came out this year, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Um, and again, it's always at that Centennial Park and the Duck Island. Um, so you know what? We're, we're sp spreading it. We're not forgetting. We're learning from it and we're moving forward. Um, and schools fully take part. You see all the orange shirts yes. um, that day. And again, weather cooperated fully on, on that occasion, um, which is amazing. But no, great job on the, the town staff to recognize that. Uh, I believe they had the, the flags at half mass, plus uh, maybe Every Child Matters flag is uh, at the town hall as well. So. And the schools are doing so well at uh, you know teaching this and educating people about it too, educating yeah. the children. And that's, and that's what the Truth and Reconciliation, that's, that's right. a big component is uh, learning and not forgetting and how can we improve, right? Right, so. right, right, right. Now I know we're not going to be seeing you for a couple of weeks now, but maybe we can talk about Halloween. Oh, scary Since that uh, we're talking about Halloween I already, know, right? yes. But uh, you're right, it's only a few weeks away. And uh, again, just reminders where... Uh, warm clothing for the kids, visible, so the mask, if, if they're wearing masks, make sure the eye holes are visible, it's not just that tunnel vision, they can mm -hmm. see all three, uh, like the peripheral vision as well. Um, a lot of the, um, the bags now are light up bags, which are really good, or I've seen kids with like um, the glow rings and stuff like that, the yes. glow sticks wearing those, so be as visible as possible. Um, big thing we always, watch for and, and try to get people is not to walk down the middle of the roads so use the sidewalks where applicable um, a lot of the back streets aren't lit as good as the the main streets so just hate to have anybody uh, kind of running down the streets and stuff like that so again just be mindful of that if uh, if you're bringing out a young child just make sure that they're fairly close to you or if they're a little bit older maybe uh, make sure that they're in a group environment so excellent excellent and i i always like to talk about you know lock it or lose it it's just such an easy thing to do. It is, and again, it's it's one of those things, we, we still get calls. Um, it always goes in kind of waves, if you would. So we'll get a, a, f a rash of three or four days worth, and then we might not get any for a few days. But it's one of those, it's a, like we said, crime of opportunity. It takes a few seconds to lock your car uh, as best you can. Um, people forget, people get busy. You think you'll lock it, but mm -hmm. maybe not. Just take that extra 10 seconds, make sure your valu valuables are out of sight. If you are keeping them in the car, your doors are locked, your keys are not in your car, wallet, anything valuable, cell phones, um, just tuck everything away if you have to keep them in there. And uh, like I said, look, it's a crime of opportunity. If they look at my car and they see it's locked, they can't really see anything inside, so it's not of interest, right? Mm -hmm. So they'll move on to somebody else's. So if we can 
have one of those people um, lock their cars and keep their valuables out of sight, then we've done our job. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, is there anything you'd like to add before we wrap up? No, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, we also took part, sorry, uh, national campaign. So it's um, Operation uh, Impact. So that took place over the long weekend, just past um, Thanksgiving weekend. So it's it's done through the CACP, so the Canadian Association Chiefs of Police. And um, it was all nationwide, and we're looking for those big four, the seat belt, cell phones, distracted driving, uh, aggressive driving. Um, so our officers were out um, over the, the course of the weekend. I, I'm happy to announce that our, our town drivers were doing very well. So Excellent, excellent, excellent. I, I just thought of something else. I read an article where you had to uh, actually uh, give somebody naloxone. Oh, yes. I read that article. Um, d d Maybe you can talk a little sure, bit about that yeah. because it's so important. We've talked about it in the past, but uh, when I read the article that you actually had to administer it to somebody. Yeah, so it, very, it was one of those things, again, those come in waves. We'll get a, a bad batch of whatever illicit drugs in our community. Um, and this one here, there was fentanyl, um, and that's what causes a lot of the overdoses. So we had just came from a, a call where I um, was dealing with an individual who taken some fentanyl um, lost my kit on that one was heading back to the station and got another call 911 call so this is all in an hour so called for my partner because my kit was gone so had to um, administer on a, a female she was in her 50s and uh, I give the life-saving credit it definitely goes to our person that found the victim and because she wasn't breathing so the caller called 911, gave CPR till we got there. Uh, when we arrived, she was uh, resuscitated a little bit. She had some color back, she was breathing. Um, asked what happened. She goes, I think she may have taken something. Uh, unresponsive, couldn't wake her up. So we gave her the, um, ended up being two shots of the naloxone, it's a nasal spray. So all of our officers were, were pretty good at carrying them now on us, mm -hmm. um, just because, again, it, it's in our community and uh, you just hate not to have it. Paramedics all have it as well. Um, but that call there from start to finish, I would say from 10 minutes, 911, finding this victim, not responsive, um, probably dead, like clinically dead, um, but she brought her back to life. We were able to intervene at when we arrived and then paramedics were there within two or three minutes after we arrived and by that time after giving her the two shots of the naloxone she had regained consciousness still very very semi-conscious we'll say mm -hmm. uh, and then the paramedics took over and loaded her up and brought her to the hospital uh, all within 10 minutes so that just tells you how lucky we are to have um, resources in our community and police officers available to to get there immediately, like two or three minutes after she called 911, we were on scene, so. Well, and these naloxone kits are available. They are people. everywhere now, yep. and it, it, it's so easy to get them. You don't have to re give any information, training, um, like when we first got them. So uh, our MSER team actually started um, being able to hand them out in the community. So people that we're dealing with um, or interacting with for any means, um, we can now hand those out, but any pharmacy, um, can give you them out, and they're all nasal. There's no more the uh, the needle injections. So, Excellent. very simple. Um, people say, "Well, I don't know anybody that uses drugs," but how do you mm -hmm. know if somebody's coming over to your house, and you don't know? Maybe if your kids have friends and they're teenagers, and you don't know what they've taken maybe before they got there. So, I have one in my house, um, just in case. You right. never know, right? right? So, right. It's like knowing your CPR, knowing your first aid, knowing the Heimlich maneuver. Exactly. It's, it's part it's, of that. Yeah. It's part of that first aid mm -hmm. emergency response stuff now. So you're right. right. Well, well, thank you for doing that. That was amazing. Yeah, it was uh, sharing that story. It, it, was, it needs uh, to be known that it, it does happen here. Amazing to see because you, you've seen videos on it, you've been trained on it, mm -hmm. but actually to see it in use and scary. I, I've seen it probably three or four times in that maybe three week window. Mm -hmm. There was some some bad drugs coming through our community. So, um, but happy to say everybody was revived by officers. So uh, again, great job on our staff and um, the training we receive. Excellent, excellent. So important, so important. Well, I thank you very much for coming here and, and sharing your your, uh, your stories with us and uh, 
helping our community and making people aware of this sort of thing too. So I thank you for your time doing this. Oh, I love coming and uh, again, it's just a, a nice platform, great partnership that we can share what we do in our community because we, we are very active and uh, again, this is just a tidbit of what we do, the yes. snapshot or the highlights, but uh, we have some great uh, men and women that we work with or that I work with and uh, amazing for our community. So yep. job well done. Very proud of our police mm -hmm. department yeah. here in Smith Falls. So. Once again, Constable Aaron Tompkins from the Smith Falls Police Department, our Community Service Officer, thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to your monthly updates. Definitely. Thanks for having me, and we'll see you next time.